Cool. Well, let's just get started and then folks that come in when they come in, they will uh, catch up then. Um, so yeah, I'm with Tadbo Collective as is Kevin, who's going to be helping me if there's a chat or something I don't see. Um, and we've been working with Civi since 2012, since it became you know, possible to use Civi with WordPress. Uh, and ever since then, we've been trying to make it work beautifully with WordPress. Uh, which is how many years now? Wow, that's eight years, is that right? Um, so we're gonna talk about these uh, plugins that basically talk, have a touch point or integration points with Civi. Some of them are you know, a little older, so you might know about them, and some of them are newer and or not on the WordPress plugin repository yet, so you may not have heard of them yet, but I will, but they're all working, they're on, production sites in the wild. And so, uh, yes, that's what I can tell you. Uh, the first one, which I think uh, every, so I have a demo site and we have, well, we're, we're gonna be putting this out into the public uh, once we finish the setup so you guys can log in and test it out uh, as well. Um, but when you, one of the first plugins you should always install is the Civi Admin Utilities. Um, where is it right here? Um, and it just gives you some handy dandy little checkbox options and settings that lets you uh, control a little of what you, what you, what your, what things happen between Civi and WordPress. Uh, this one is usually unchecked by default. Uh, so it doesn't have like the WordPress looking theme over it until you check that box off. So let me just open a dashboard here. Um, if I remove this checkbox and hit save, um, this this is kind of what Civi look like with it on and with it off. It'll just look like Civi does without it, uh, kind of out of the box without any theming, um, which I guess you can't really tell there. Let me see, advanced search. Yeah, so it has this kind of like the default uh, colors. And then once you enable this, it, it does, oh, here you go. Look at that, Christian's so good. Um, it just has a little, it makes it more, more, look more like WordPress and you just kind of navigate between the two and when staff or people look back and forth, they don't feel like they're going between two softwares as much. Um, there's a few fixes for suppressing the, if you've ever, if you have a membership organization and you ever change their primary email address in Civi, it actually sends the WordPress automatic notification saying, hey, did you change your, did you change your email? And uh, some of our clients didn't like that that was happening. So this checkbox lets you prevent that email from going out so you can make changes in Civi and that notification doesn't go out to users. Um, I don't remember what this is, but it fixes something with soft delete. Great. Um, this one adds a shortcut menu. So you see the city menu here. It wouldn't be here if you don't check that off. <clears throat> I think it's on by default once you enable the plugin. Mm -hmm. And this manage group option is if you have multiple kind of roles or people who access Civi, the manage groups menu, like there's no per ACL or permission in Civi to hide it. So this lets you hide it uh, so that people that can't manage groups won't see it. Um, and then it does, if you're using WordPress, uh, classic editor, as opposed to Gutenberg, the block editor, um, you can enable where you want that to appear to put information on different types of content. And these are just some things if you do updates and clearing caches that gives you. So it's a nice little handy uh, plugin that everybody should have. Um, that's not the right tab. Uh, Civi Member Sync. So if you are a membership organization and you have uh, different member types uh, and you want to give people a login to the website, um, you want to install this, this plugin. And what it does is it basically allows you to, it has some default settings of how often to check Civi and then what method to use if you want to use capabilities or roles to associate a membership uh, status in Civi and Word for, and, and with a role in WordPress. And then basically you just map these out, right? So that if they are, sorry, this Zoom window, I'm gonna, I'll edit this. Uh, if they are 
you know, current new grace, they are member, they are member type role. And if they're not, if they're one of these statuses, they get changed to lapse. So it automatically do, kind of demotes them, if you will. Uh, so that if they have access to content or anything specific, uh, they would stop being able to access that uh, on the website. Uh, and you would set that in, in, the, in this setting. So you choose a member type from Civi and then the roles from the WordPress roles that you create. Um, once I get to groups, there's a group set up here where I'll show you in a second. Um, so that's for any time, anytime you want to give people a login uh, and assign the, uh, be able to give them access to the, to the website uh, to view content, post content, etc. cetera. Um, so the group sync. The group sync uh, is there's a plugin called groups, which uh, the links I put the put the slides up, but the links I have them all in the slides, so you can go. Uh, this is I guess I can go here. This plugin. You have to install this plugin first uh, to be able to use this uh, Civi plugin, and this one we have on the extensions directory um, on the Civi on Civi GitLab. And what this does is it lets you basically create a group and then assign capabilities to that group and map that group to Civi. So, um, for example, if you add a new group called, I don't know, events, I already have that, right, don't I? Uh, you know, volunteers. Uh, you can say, I want to also create a group called volunteers in Civi, and it'll create that. And then here it lists basically every capability that WordPress and Civi has. And then you can just give them access to the pieces you, you want them to have access to, for example. Um, and so this is a way to make, if somebody's a subscriber role in WordPress, they can still have access to pieces of WordPress and pieces of Civi, even though they're a subscriber, because this group's integration kind of gives them those capabilities. Um, so for example, I'm not going to say that one, but for example, uh, we have different staff roles that we put up here and then different staff have access to different parts of Civi um, in the, in, in, as, when they log in. Um, so this lets you, basically gives us the ability to use groups and in, in, uh, in WordPress and sync the groups in Civi. And then you can add the contact either in Civi or the user here and it will just sync, sync up. Um, what it also does is when you add content to a page <laughs> on the front end here <clears throat> if I create a page in WordPress there is this group section and it says let anybody of this type of group see this right so you can uh, make sure this is this page is only visible to page post or whatever visible to that that group there is also a block I'm not uh, there's blocks that if you have content within the page that you can say show this content to people in this group or or if they're not in this group hide it and so you can kind of very get specific on what you want people to see on a page uh, that ties to their to their access to that group um, so it's pretty 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 uh pretty robust tool did i miss anything on that one kevin no no you're doing great yeah. <laughs> You know. Um, oh, and so as it ties into membership, because you're like, why? Um, where is this uh, user uh, membership? Because uh, this has a sync that ties into their stat a member status. Uh, that the groups doesn't talk to membership. Uh, there is a way that you can say if this member is a status, whatever they're part of group. I know I have one called uh, what program staff. Is that right? Yeah. Um, and if they're not, if they're already expired, then move them to what did I put the other one? Events, maybe? I don't remember. Um, so you can use groups with a membership sync uh, to be able to have people be in and out of groups uh, based on their member status. Um, the, that's groups. Um, what's next? What do we got next? Caldera Forms integration. This requires a plugin called Caldera Forms, which is this plugin. Um, if 
uh, and I'll just show you we have, oh, why did I just do that? Let me go back. Um, so which installs and then gives you this menu item. Um, we could do a presentation for like two hours just on this plugin. So I just want to say that out of the box because there's so much you can do with it. <laughs> but um, the things that you should be aware of when using Caldera Forms is you want to create any data fields, so custom fields, uh, membership types, events, anything you, uh, price sets, you set up everything in Civi first. Um, so you get what you need in Civi in the right order. And then you come to Caldera Forms and you create the form, the front end form, uh, which looks like this, where, you know, you have the organization, whatever organization name. And do I have one in here? Uh, this is the wrong form to use. Hang on. I'm going to use this one. Um, <clears throat> so, so if the custom field exists uh, in Civi, sorry, um, where is the word? Where so, so for example, member options. Um, there is an auto populate option that lets you go into Civi and say, hey, what field, what do I want to use for this, right? So all the price sets are here. So if I had created the price sets prior and you come in here, you'd be able to select those. And so you don't have to rebuild every field, uh, all the options within the field, but you do have to set up the field itself um, to, to get it to get the information from Civi. Um, and then you do have to use it when, if you're using money uh, payments on a form, you do have to have a total field that does the selection, uh, the total cut that will be processed in that order. Um, once you have your form set up, like for all these first name, last name, basically it uses a series of what's called processors to add information, to map in between Civi and WordPress. And so when you add a processor, you'll see there's a contact processor, the order processor, which creates an order in Civi. If you're using line items, you have to add a line item processor when needed uh, and all on. So these are, you can create activities, you can have relationships be created and so on. So all these are options and entities that add uh, Civi. And if you use the email API extension, you can create the messaging, the emails that go out that talks to Civi to send emails, uh, uh, there are message templates in Civi. Um, this is why this could take two hours. Um, but once you have that form set up and your fields in place, you basically create, the first thing you always need is a contact processor because you don't, you need to know what contact the information is related to. Um, and then you go through each of the options and there, there's something called magic tags that basically if you start typing here, first name, for example, it just drops down and then you can fill it out. And these are basically what sends information to Civi once people hit submit. Um, and so it does take some time to learn and uh, know what to do, but once you have it set up, it kind of works kind of nicely. Um, each of these processors also have conditions. <laughs> so you can say, use this processor only if they say yes to this or no to that, or only if this is right. So that way, um, you know, things that don't, weren't included in the total or whatever won't get charged or, or the information that wasn't relevant won't get charged. If you do do money payments, you do need to buy the paid app. Currently, you have to buy the paid add-ons uh, that it works with Stripe and it works with uh, authorized.net. We have not looked at PayPal. So if it works, it's a, it's a miracle, um, not because it was done on intentionally. <laughs> um, but it's a really uh, robust form builder. Uh, the for, you know, forms can have conditions. So you can have show this form and if that happens and so on. Um, we do have a decent amount of documentation on the, this one's on, this one is, we do have it on the WordPress repo, but it's more on GitHub. Uh, let me find this thing. Um, hold there. Um, uh, and then the, in this doc, documentation, uh, we have a lot of things written out as much as possible, uh, which has not been, up, which could be updated, but has information to help you walk you through as best we can, as, you know, generically as we can, 
to set up these uh, these forms. Um, and if you if you have enhancements or improvements, we're always happy to to receive those <laughs> as well. Um, so it's a really powerful tool. We use this almost on every website um, at this point. Um, is there anything else I should say about Caldera that I forgot? <laughs> Uh, there's a lot. We can come back to this at the end because now, because of the time zone, we might have longer because right. the closing remarks are not at three, they're at four. So trying to navigate the schedule. So we might let folks ask questions about that at the end. Right. We can do that. And Ping asked, is Caldera a free plugin? And yes. that certainly is. And the integration is a free plugin. The only paid add-ons that you must use at this point is um, payment processors. Right. Um, and we have, we're hoping to start to integrate with Civi's payment processors, but that's a planned feature or another way of saying it doesn't exist yet. So. Right. It may eventually depending on, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah, the Caldera Forms plugin is free. And the Caldera Home Civi CRM plugin is also free. Um, and you can download it here. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have Event Organizer. So Civi CRM Event Organizer, let me just open all the tabs here. Um, Event Organizer is a WordPress plugin that basically adds an event calendar to your website. Um, it's very robust. It, it has add-ons, but you, I've, we have, you can use, it does a lot with the free stuff. I don't think you'll need any of the add-ons. Um, and then you're also going to have to install this radio buttons for taxonomies. What this does when you install it is that if you go into the settings here, They'll say radio buttons for taxonomies. You basically check off event category so that you can only select one, uh, you know, event, one category per event. And that's because the event categories in WordPress are mapped to event types in Civi and you can only have one event type per event. So that's why you need that plugin. Um, and then what this does, there's a few, when you install CBCM event organizer, um, where is it event organizer? There, there are some settings, initial settings that you can look at that lets you set up a default event type and role and, and profile. Um, and then it lets you, if you have a city that has a lot of events and you want to sync them, it lets you sync the information over um, the categories to event types, for example, the venues, um, and then the events themselves. <clears throat> so for example, if I go into events and categories here, um, these are basically all the same event types that are exist in Civi. Um, and then venues uh, has all the, the venues that were created in Civi that get added here as well. Um, and then the events themselves can also be synced. So for example, um, this rainforest, uh, I have a Caldera Forms in here, I guess I'm testing. Um, but basically when you create the event, it creates a title, uh, you know, you add the content that asks you for the, you know, start time, date, end time, date, um, the venue. It'll ask you, so because I enabled the radio, right, it's a radio button and not a uh, checkbox, which usually categories are by default. And then it adds, there's some, there's new settings here that says, you know, sync this event to Civi. And if you want to use an online registration, ask you if you want to enable it. Um, if this is a new event and you hit publish, uh, this link won't exist yet, but once you hit publish, it will. And then once you hit, this is the link to the event in Civi um, that was created and or, and then you can you know do everything else you can do with Civi where you set up the fees um, and the online registration and so on. So this is a, scheduled reminders and all that stuff, and then the rest happens in Civi. Um, the reason to do this, a couple of reasons to do this is one, um, with WordPress, if you have events like that, you're able now to create like an event. Oh, sorry, I should have gone to the events. 
you're able to create like an event archive page, right? So you can say these are all our upcoming events. Um, and then when people click on read more, they would click on read more um, and then they would get an event, you know, an event that looks like this. And then when they hit the register link, they're taken to whatever, uh, you know, profile was set up. And if there were any fees here, they would um, show up here if there was a paid event. Um, yeah, so it works kind of nicely. It kind of ties in indirectly. In, in I'll come back to this because there's some uh, integration with the ACF stuff now, but I don't want to touch on that until I show you that piece. Um, but yeah, this is only on GitHub currently. I believe uh, Christian's trying to get it onto the WordPress plugin repo, but I can't remember what the status of that is at the moment, but it, it, would, it might be eventually on the, on the WordPress repo. Where is my, so yeah, that's what the event organizer uh, does and it works very nice. Um, wait, I missed one. I just saw that. Okay, I'm just quickly going on here after which I put on the list here, but I think I'll have to add a slide, but there's a plugin called <laughs> CivicR redirect. Um, this one is also only on GitHub's right now. Uh, redirect. Hang on. Um, did I spell that wrong? Caldera redirect. That's what it's called. Caldera forms redirect. Um, well, I'll find a link in a second. But what this does is if uh, you're using Caldera Forms, um, it adds an option under here where you can create redirects. It's essentially, I don't wanna use, uh, in particular for event, but I don't wanna use the default profile. I wanna use this, this Caldera form I created for event registration, or I wanna use, you know, for a contribution page, right? And then you say, I want to redirect, you know, from XYZ event and it goes to XYZ page or post. Um, I'll show you on the Civi side here. Um, for example, this one I have, because I did uh, an annual conference. If I go into my annual conference here, um, this still looks like event organizer, but when I hit register now, it's gonna, it should redirect uh, if I set it up right. See, Kevin, something happened here. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but I'm going to blame Kevin for that one. But That's a, I'll take blame for anything. <laughs> uh, but what it does is when you go into a city event, which I like this one is, um, there is a Caldera redirect uh, tab. And it says, uh, by default, it's not active. And you say, I want to reactivate it. And I want it to go to the page. And I want it to go XYZ page. Um, so that way you're using a Caldera form for registration right. uh, and not, so it would look, let me go to the front end of the website here. What an annual conference? Okay. I have a feeling it has to do with the registration pages. dates. Oh, well. It could be that uh, too. Where is it? Advanced annual conference. Um, so it would technically, if it were all working, had I tested that piece. Um, <laughs> redirect to a form that looks like this for folks to uh, log on to, right? So it's an, it's an event where they can, you know, I'm already registered, so it won't let me register again, but um, it'll ask me my, you know, what the, what I want to pay for, if, what events I want to go to, what tours I want to go to, uh, and so on, so that when I, and I get pay and it sends all this information into Civi. <clears throat> kind of automatically, I guess. So that's a handy plug and if you wanted to have the register link kind of be overwritten the the civi register link so instead of using this default registration which uses profiles it'll redirect to a caldera form essentially based on what you said here um yeah so that was civi oh, I'll, I'll, okay you found it. yeah it needs an update the re <laughs> because of, well, no, because of the changes in WordPress URLs. And what I thought, uh, yeah. that, that's what it needs. Right. Okay. Are we, we're good on time, right? Okay. So, so this year on ACF is uh, there's a plugin called Advanced Custom Fields, which is very widely used in WordPress world. 
many people who use WordPress probably already use this. Um, but it's a plugin that you can install. There's a free version. And it lets you create, it gives you a new UI, which I'll show you to create custom fields. Um, you do fancy stuff. And then there's a pro version that you pay annually and it just gives you a couple more fields uh, that you can do thing, even cooler things. <laughs> um, and then where is the pro, the pricing uh, on here? So yeah, it's, it's really not that much in my biased opinion for a year if you and if you have multiple clients or multiple people using it that you can use it and if, it, if it's a personal site right it's not that expensive to uh, to add but what does this do so in uh once you install um acf you're basically able to create field groups similar to in civi where you can create um you know field groups of contacts and then you can add fields and say I want a field you know event title let's say um, and then you would define the field type you want um, and there's a variety of different things you can do in Civi uh, with sorry in WordPress and I'll go through I'm going to go through how it talks to Civi just as you'll notice here there's a few Civis here on specific field types um, and I should show you do I have that open the plugin itself currently only lives on github um, so you can download and install it from here uh, this is again very new it's only four months old but it's working and it does a lot of cool things which i'll show you um, where should i start so you create custom fields and you can uh, map them and what happens is if you sometimes for the first time you create the field you have to publish before it does anything but I'm going to show you somewhere else because I haven't mapped this to Civi. Um, let's start in Civi actually. There's a in Civi, uh, the, the initial uh, thought of this plugin was using custom fields uh, for a contact type. So in Civi here, you, uh, you, know, you guys know we can create contact types. Um, so I created a couple contact types one student and all these staff and whatnot. So I'm gonna look at this uh, member profile one. And when you create a, uh, a contact type, once you've installed this plugin, it says what post type do you wanna sync it to? Do you want it to be related to? And a post type in Civi, or I'm sorry, in WordPress, are basically different content types, uh, which depending on how you set them up, will give you new menu items uh, on, on your dashboard like this. So for example, I have member profile I've tied here to the member members post type. Um, and so basically I'm able to create a profile for contacts and this information, you know, is viewed in, in WordPress and there's a bio and whatnot. Uh, and it creates relationships, there's a relationship field and then it creates a relationship to the contact in Civi um, and this then, if you want to see in Civi, see this person, it's, it shows you here. And then they, these are the custom fields that were related uh, to that profile that are addition to uh, their first name, last name, and so on. And then since there was a relationship in that profile, you'll see it also lists, lists it here. Um, so why is this useful? Uh, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, if you did it back end only, you can give uh, like volunteers or people uh, kind of lower level access, if you will, to be able to edit and view contacts in Civi without having to go to Civi. Um, and then they can update and edit things a little easier um, using a kind of this kind of UI. It also creates uh, what's it called? Uh, if it were like a member directory like this one, it creates a front end display, right? So you can uh, theme it and create a profile and have it show up over here. So for example, I have the members <clears throat> listed here and just shows me all our current members. Um, and then if I hit view, it'll give me the information about that member. And then uh, you, you could have obviously more, more fields listed here if they, if I had any more fields like, you know, custom fields and so on. <clears throat> so it's really lets you kind of talk to Sibian WordPress a lot, a lot cleaner. 
um, I will show you similar to Caldera forms in the in that you have to map all the you want to set up civvy to have the custom fields, the contact types, whatnot uh, first before you come over here and create the fields and map them. Because um, when you create when you add a field, for example, you'll say I'll add a text field, and then uh, that you'll see you after you've updated up, added this plugin and mapped the contact subtype to you know a post type in Civi, this field will appear, and then you can you'll be able to map uh, map the information to Civi. <clears throat> so first name, last name, email, and so on. Um, and then I have I've set it up. If you notice, I have uh, board members members which are individuals and then I have staff. So these are three types of um, individuals or like individual contact uh, types. And so I've had these fields mapped to all three of these contact types. So I can, so these fields apply to everybody. Um, but when the fields that are specific to just, for example, members, I would just add to this section and then I only map it. To that field, and then when I'm uh, adding the field type, in this case it was a WYSIWYG field, uh, I, I'm able to map that field. Um, and it works kind of, I mean, it just works uh, kind of seamlessly where you can add, let me see, let me add, uh, let's work on Felicia. Um, did I hit edit? You want to maybe re, you know remove this? Actually, I'll just create two par two paragraphs. Um, does this update? And I'm going to add a relationship. Uh, we have pro. I'm progressive. There you go. Um, and if I hit update here, um, that relationship. The the I change the. the the text and the relationship here. If I go into Civi now, um, you'll see the text here has changed to what I just updated them. And then the relationship now exists because I just added that relationship to the uh, group. Um, so it's very, very beginning stages. The other thing you can do actually is for display of uh, if you for member uh, databases specifically, usually people set up a, a, a group that says sh you know show me all contacts that are active right, and then show me all contacts that are lapsed and so on right. So in WordPress, the way to control the display of that is usually used through taxonomies, uh, okay. term terms within a taxonomy. So I in this case created a, a taxonomy called status. Um, and then whenever you create a taxonomy, it's going to list the available groups that you can link them to. Um, so for example, I'm going to do, I have an active membership group. Um, and you'll see once you do it once, you it, it's kind of hard. You can't change it. So if you made a mistake, you'll have to delete the term and add the term again. Um, but it just maps it to there. So if people are not in that group, um, they would no longer appear. Uh, because if you'll notice here, I have some a status of some set to active and some not. Um, and then if you look at the front end of the website, um, you only see on the member directory, you only see the ones that are set to active. Uh, they will disappear from the directory once they're no longer on active. Um, so I'm going to interrupt you, Dana, because they did do the time zone math wrong and we are due back in the main hall. Oh, well, so, there you go. So I should have stuck with my original instincts of Done. remembering. So um, there's some questions here that um, after the main hall, there is some opportunity for us to continue. If you want to come back in, we can do more pointed questions and whatnot then. So I think the link to go back to the correct Zoom room is in the um, chat, if everybody could see that. So if we want to pop over there and then come back here in about, it sounds like it's only about 15 minutes over there. So, okay. Cool. I'm stopping share for now. We'll come back. Right. And thanks everybody for coming and watching. Um, I look forward to questions afterwards because usually that's where a lot of the good stuff gets really talked about. Right. Exactly. All right.